So after we calculate the correlation coefficient, so in this case, we obtain the value of 0 0.6. Regardless whether the relationship is very strong or very weak, or dilation of the relationship, it's important to test if this relationship is statistically significant. So in this case, we're going to use the person correlation test. And it is very similar to the t-test that you learned in the previous lecture. So for the procedure, as usual, it's same as t-test. So first is to formulate the hypothesis, set the criteria. So you're going to find the critical statistical value for t from the t-table. Obtain the test score. So you're going to do the t-test. So we need to calculate the correlation coefficient. After that, perform the t-test on the correlation coefficient and then we compare the critical statistical value so the value that we obtain from the table with the test score so the value that we calculate from the t-test and then make a decision whether to reject or not to reject the no hypothesis so the first step to formulate the hypothesis statistical hypothesis for correlation test quite different from t-test so this is how it looks like for the relationship statistical hypothesis. So for the no hypothesis, we will say there is no relationship between body height and body weight of conservation biology student. Okay. So here there are a few elements very important. So there must be the variable mentioned in the hypothesis and also your population. Okay which you have obtained the sample. For alternative hypothesis, then it's the opposite of this one. So there is relationship between the body height and body weight of conservation biology student. So the relationship is measured by correlation coefficient. At the same time, you also need to write in this way. This is rho. Okay, so this is a symbol that represents the R in mathematics so the r is equal to zero so there's no relationship and the r is not equal to zero so there's a really significant relationship so you have to remember how to formulate the hypothesis for Pearson correlation test the next step is to set the criteria again the way that we set the criteria is slightly different than the t-test although we refer to the same table first we need to determine our alpha in most of the examples that we use, we choose the alpha 0 0.05. And the degree of freedom for Pearson correlation is no longer n minus 1. So it's not n minus 1 as t-test. For Pearson correlation, the degree of freedom is n minus 2 because there are two variables involved in the test. So in this case, we have 15 students and we have two variables n is 15, so the degree of freedom is 15 minus 2. Pearson correlation test is always a two-tailed test. It's always a two-tailed test. Because you only investigate whether the correlation coefficient is equal to 0 or is not equal to 0, whether it's significant or not significant. So based on this information, you can pause the video for a few seconds and try to look for the critical value for this statistical test based on this example. Okay. So in this case, our alpha is 0 0.05. Our n is 15. Okay. n is a two-tailed test. So we can write in this way. So T 0 0.05, 2 tail, and the V is 15 minus 2 is equal to 13. So the V is 13. So this is the 2 tail test. So we're going to refer to this row. And the degree of freedom is 13. And the alpha is 0 0.05. So it's translate to the 95% computer interval. So the two side. 95% all the way down to 13, degree of freedom 13. 
So our critical T value is 2.164. So it's good to make a curve for you to have a reference, easy reference. So this is a two tail test. And your critical value is 2.160. So on the positive side is 2.160. Negative side is negative 2.160. So the next thing we need to do is to calculate our t value for the test. So to see whether the value is for in the critical region or not. So next is to perform the statistical test. So this is the formula. So as you can see, we have the t test and we need to calculate the correlation coefficient and then the standard error for correlation coefficient. We have already learned in the last lecture how to calculate correlation coefficient. For the standard error, this is the formula. So it's very simple. What you have to do, you need to have a correlation coefficient and also the n. For our example, this is the correlation coefficient that we calculate 0 0.6. To calculate the standard error, just put in the value. So in, in this example, it's 0 0.6 for the correlation coefficient, but the n is 15 because you have 15 students. So you just put the value in the formula and then solve the mathematics. So we just square the correlation coefficient and then 1 minus the square value and divide by the degree of freedom, which is 15 minus 2, equal to 13. And after that, we will obtain our standard error for correlation coefficient. So there are only two values involved in this t-test. So you can just put the value and then calculate the t-score. So this is the t-score our calculated t value. So the next thing is to compare with the critical value that we obtained from the table. Do you still remember what is the critical value that we obtained just now? So this is a critical value that we obtained just now and this is our t score. You can make a chart. Okay. So this is a two-tail test. Okay. And my critical value here is negative 2.164 for a negative side. On the other end of the curve is 2.160. And our t value is 2.7. So it's somewhere here. So it's somewhere here. 2.7 or 3. So it's for in a rejection region. So in this case, we're going to reject the no hypothesis because the test score is larger than the critical value. So the next thing is to make a conclusion. After we reject the no hypothesis, then we can only go for the alternative hypothesis. For alternative hypothesis, it says there is relationship between the body height and body weight. So that means that the R value 0 0.60 that we obtain is statistically significant. So this relationship has a positive relationship and is a significant relationship. So there are two assumptions for Pearson correlation test. So first is a linearity. We have to assume the relationship is linear. So this is this can be observed after we make a chart of both variables. So if the Result of your plot is something like this. Actually, in this case, there is a relationship. The relationship is not a linear relationship. Okay? And the relationship it seems is following consistent and general trend. So in this case, if we calculate the R for this data set, it might show you there is no relationship. However, for this data set, Pearson correlation might not be the suitable analysis.
because for first Pearson correlation test, the correlation coefficient that we calculate is what we are with the data that show the linear relationship. As usual, as the t-test, we are going to make sure that our data is normally distributed because the curve, the statistical table that we defer is based on the normal distribution curve. So at the end of this lecture, you're going to have one assignment which you are required to perform the statistical analysis for the relationship data that you collected from your tutorial number four.